Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. And right, international football can produce some stats that clearly just don't make an iota of sense. What I'm going to do is go through every Premier League club and find one player with the weirdest international stat. Something that just looks very weird. Something that should make someone feel embarrassed. Whether it be them, or the team they scored against, or whoever. Right, let's go. Arsenal. Robbie Keane is nearly three times more international goals than Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Listen, Robbie Keane is a Tottenham icon, and he has 68 goals for his country. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, by contrast, has just 25 for Gabon. Maybe it's not that big a deal, but considering some Arsenal fans compare Aubameyang to Thierry Henry, I'd imagine there's a stick Spurs fans might use to beat them with. Aston Villa, Jack Grealish has less England caps than Jack Rodwell. Here's a stat for you. When Jack Grealish snubbed Ireland for England, it took him five years to actually get an international cap. That is half a decade. In the length of time he's had to wait for a cap, DiCaprio won an Oscar, Harambe invaded the internet, nerds spent the summer hypnotized by Pokemon Go, Vine closed down, and another royal wedding happened. It's taken Grealish so long, and yet the glorious truth is that he's 25 years old and has less England caps than Danny Drinkwater, John Joe Shelby, and Jack Rodwell. Tom Huddleston has twice as many caps as him. Oh, don't you just love it? Brighton, Danny Welbeck has scored more goals for England than Raheem Sterling. Listen, Danny Welbeck's career has been an injury riddled mess, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be a Brighton flop. Twice above, he hasn't managed more than five league goals in a season since David Moyes was at Old Trafford. That is a long time ago, but here's a stat for you. He still scored more goals for England than Raheem Sterling and Marcus Rashford, and even more incredibly, he's just one goal behind David Beckham. You know, the former England captain with 115 caps? Welbeck, who also mostly played on the right for his country, scored 16 goals in 42 caps. That is pretty Pretty damn good. Burnley, Ashley Barnes has represented Austria. When you think of Ashley Barnes, you think of a brutish, old-fashioned British centre forward. And he is. He's a starting brute of a striker. Previously of Plymouth, Brighton and now Burnley. It's a very predictable CV for a fellow who looks like he probably spends Sunday afternoons cutting pints of Stella down the local pub. I wouldn't be surprised if the man owns a British bulldog and has a tattoo of Brexit on his arse. But what blatantly stands out in his career is the fact that this fella has a cap for the Austrian under-20 team. How out of place can you look? When he made his debut against Switzerland in August 2008, a Plymouth striker who probably smelt of fish and chips and stale beer. Half the Austrian fans probably assumed he was a British tourist who'd stuck into the ground. Just a bit embarrassing of the Austrian FA. Instead of scouting homegrown talent, they're actually desperately calling up Plymouth strikers who don't speak the language, probably can't locate Vienna on a map, and who have just one Austrian granny. Chelsea, Olivier Giroud is France's second highest goal scorer. If you've never seen Olivier Giroud play and judged him purely based on fan opinion, you'd assume he was a fat, uncoordinated lump who's been stealing a living in London for going on eight years. Oh yeah, well how is this for a stat to shove down the doubters' throats? To make those people people look very stupid. Only seven human beings have ever received more French caps than Giroud, and even better, he is the country's second highest goal scorer of all time with 42 goals. Yeah, more than Platini, Trezeguet, Zidane, and lads, he's only nine goals off Thierry Henry. Put some respect on Giroud's name. Curse the Palace, Christian Mateki's fastest ever World Cup goal. This is a stat which sums up the level of embarrassment found in the standard of international football these days. Nowadays, Christian Mateki is about as threatening on a football pitch as a big bag of tablespoons. And yet still, in October 2016, he set the record for the fastest goal in a World Cup qualifying match, scoring for Belgium after just 8.1 seconds against Gibraltar. Lads, I know the Gibraltese football team consists of part-time mechanics and plumbers. Christ them up, they're so strapped of talent on that tiny island. I wouldn't be surprised if the FA's idea of scouting was to scour the streets for home just meant to chuck on the pitch. But still, conceding after just 8 seconds, the length of time it takes to fold a t-shirt, the length of time it takes to sneeze into your hand, and against Benteke, a washed up lump of grease? Just embarrassing. Everton, Bernard's worst ever senior debut. Okay, this was just sad. Listen, Bernard is a talented winger, but if you want to know why he never became the next Neymar, and instead spends his prime on Everton's bench, maybe it's because his confidence was squeezed out his ears back in 2014. Imagine being given your first start in a major tournament for Brazil. And even better, it's a World Cup semi-final, and in your hometown of Belo Horizonte, a stone's throw away from your childhood house. He probably wasn't able to sleep the night before, ringing up his entire family to get them tickets. This was the pinnacle, the greatest honor ever bestowed to anyone in his long line of family heritage. The pressure would have been immense. But unfortunately for Bernard, it, it culminated in the biggest sporting embarrassment in the country's history, playing the full 90 minutes in a 7-1 destruction against Germany. Arguably the worst international tournament debut of all time. And is it any wonder he hasn't made picks since then? I wouldn't be surprised if the Brazilian FA have since blocked his number and banished him from the country. Fulham, Marek Rodak's entire international career. Okay, the weird stat here, it's just Marek Rodak's entire international career. The guy scored a 94th minute winner for Slovakia under 21s in a crucial 2019 European Championship qualifying match against Iceland and considering he's a goalkeeper, utter scenes. And then on his senior international debut, he just so happens to keep a clean sheet in 120 minutes against Ireland, winning a penalty shootout on a night that honestly ripped a chunk out of my soul. Leeds, Kiko Casilla has played for two countries. Yeah, the forgotten man, bit weird, but Kiko Casilla, the 34-year-old benchwarming goalie at Leeds, has to combine six international caps for two nations. One for Spain and five for Catalonia. Lads, isn't it a bit weird for a Real Madrid goalkeeper to play for Catalonia? Doesn't he have a shred of conscience? Leicester, Wes Morgan has played at a Copa America. 
Let's just say this out loud. Wes Morgan is actually played in the Copa America for Jamaica. Just what? Lads, for a fairly average journeyman British defender from Nottingham, he's carved out a bizarrely impressive CV. In the future, he'll be able to actually show his grandkids his Premier League medal and photos of him tackling Messi at a Copa America in 2015. Just crazy! In the past, you'd have expected to see the likes of Neymar, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Kaka at these tournaments. Not Wes Morgan from Leicester. But anyway, it, it didn't stop Harry Redknapp tipping him for Euro 2016 with England the next summer. Good man, Harry, on the ball as always. Christ, he probably also thinks Katie Taylor is flying the flag for Great Britain. Liverpool. James Milner played for England under 20 ones is a creepy old man. Lads, how have James Milner's legs not fallen off? This guy's been playing 30 Premier League games a season since 2002, and he has over 60 England caps, he's had 15 seasons in European competition, but in total he's played over 800 games of football. How, how has he managed that? I mean, he probably hasn't touched a packet of crisps since the 90s. Even the sight of a chocolate muffin would probably cause his kidneys to shut down. Anyway, the England 21 team is usually reserved for newbies, right? Up and coming teenagers looking to get international experience. Well, Milner's last game for the under 21s was a 4-0 defeat to Germany in the final of the 2009 UEFA European Championship, but the guy was 23 years of age with over 200 Premier League games under his belt. He was a virtual old man, so him being stuck in a team of kids at 23, it's a bit like turning up to a teenage disco. Uh, although, to be fair, he was on the same team as Adam Johnson. Why did he even want to play this tournament? It's like me arm wrestling a six-year-old child. What is there to prove? How does a 23-year-old fully grown man qualify for an under-21 tournament? Unsurprisingly, he holds the record appearances for the under-21s with 46 caps. Seeing a 23-year-old play for the under-21s, it's a bit like seeing DT at an upload event and trying to fight teenagers. Man City, Ederson has less than 10 caps for Brazil. Listen, Ederson probably views himself as the best goalkeeper on the planet, but he must feel like chucking Alisson Becker in front of a moving bus. Not only is Alisson threatening to chuck Ederson's Premier League legacy in the bin with annual title challenges, but he's also relegated Ederson to being a bench warmer with Brazil. Trying to back up your claims as being the world's best goalkeeper when you're nearly 28 years of age and have just nine international caps? It's a bit like Conor McGregor's claims to being the GOAT of MMA when his neck was crushed like a Coke can. Lads, remember Liverpool's third choice goalkeeper, Tony? Yeah, even he has a more international cast for Brazil than Ederson. Lads. Also, quick mention for Raheem Sterling, one of the world's deadliest forwards, and yet once went 27 games, i.e. three goddamn years, without scoring for England. Imagine bringing that form to the Eddie hat. He'd have his contract torn up and fed to the pigs. Man United, Bruno Fernandes was uncapped until late 2017. Okay, someone messed up here somewhere. Because Bruno Fernandes is currently 26, seen as one of the world's best midfielders, and yet only received his first cap for Portugal in November 2017, when he was already 23. I'd understand if he came from a country who didn't trust youth, but Jao Felix, Ruben Neves, and Renato Sanchez have all been capped by Portugal as kids. Plus many more! Christ above, the country gave an international cap to a guy called Rui Costa two days after his 15th birthday. So how did they overlook Fernandes during his entire five seasons in Italy. Did the Portuguese FA not understand that Serie A exists? Newcastle. Henry Sivet played in an African Nations Cup final. This is just bizarre. Henry Sivet has been one of the most pointless signings in the history of Newcastle United Football Club. A £5 million arrival in January 2016 for Bordeaux. The Senegal Frenchman has barely been used, loaned out three times, being omitted from Premier League squads. So Newcastle fans would assume his ability was on par with Jack Colback. So how do you think they reacted to seeing him line up against Algeria in the 2019 African Nations Cup final? So apparently he can't hold a candle to the long staffs, but still winds up in midfield and one of the biggest footballing fixtures on the planet? Oh, just bizarre. It's like Arsenal fans seeing the neglected Gunnasaurus star in the next Jurassic Park. Sheffield United, Phil Jagielka has 40 England caps. You would assume Phil Jagielka was a mostly mid-table defender for Everton, who was way down the pecking order of centre-back for England. It's easy to assume that, lads, but let's just remind ourselves this so-called forgotten man has 40 England caps. That's pretty damn good. He has more caps than Jamie Carragher, Michael Carrick, Harry Maguire. Not bad. Maybe a little embarrassing for Maguire. Southampton, Shane Long nearly has 100 caps for Ireland. Okay, when I could touch a tail walk and go into a World Cup at 16 based on just 20 games in the championship for Southampton, just utterly mental. But the real shocker in this list is that Shane Long has 85 caps for my country. 85? What? This fella has more Ireland caps than Rio Ferdinand has England caps. He's represented his country more times than John Terry. This guy is just 15 caps of 100 for Ireland. He is our 11th most capped footballer of all time. He's picked up 5 more Irish caps than Richard Dunn, 13 more than Liam Brady, and nearly 20 more than Roy Keane. Good Christ, how has this been allowed to happen? Tottenham, Gareth Bale is Wales record goal scorer. As good as he was, I don't think many Welshmen predicted back in 2007 that their teenage left back would end up the country's record goal scorer. Obviously, there's nothing too embarrassing about a four time Champions League winner being your record goal scorer, 
but just a bit weird for anyone who saw him play as a kid. I mean, let's not forget, he was a left back. West Brom, Hal Robson Canoe's Puskas nomination. Hal Robson Canoe has had a pretty bang average career, but you forget one of his five goals for his country was actually nominated for the FIFA Puskas Award. It's almost like it was an out of body experience where he's briefly possessed by the ghost of Johan Cry for three seconds, because most of the time he waddles about like a constipated penguin. West Ham, Declan Rice has played for two countries. How disrespectful, how utterly disrespectful. The fact Declan Rice is 11 senior England caps and three for Ireland, that is a disgrace. It wasn't even underage football, it was three big boy games, only then deciding to chuck the green shirt in the bin when he realised that he actually was good enough for England. That honestly leaves a taste of pigeon crap in my mouth. Collecting appearances for two senior national teams, it's not a proud achievement if you stamped on someone's CV. For the same reason that a serial adulterer shouldn't be bragging about three failed marriages. Probably not best to stick that one on the fridge. Wolves, Adama Traore was called up by two countries. This is what happens when you take 24 years to make your mind up about what country to play for. In November 2019, Adama Traore declares that he wants to play for Mali, and three days later he gets called up for Spain. It's a bit disrespectful, he just declared for Mali. And now you're sliding into his DMs? Anyway, even last month, Traore was called up by both countries, put in two separate national squads. I understand if you were a teenager, but at 24, how have you allowed this to happen? How have you not given anyone a definitive answer by now? Christ above, it was like a love triangle so Nauseating, it might as well have been dreamt up by that single housewife who wrote Twilight. And I'm asking everyone to let us know in the comments below. Join me on the channel, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.